Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of VizRT Tuesday Tutorials. I am your host Richard Evans. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So today I'd like to show you how to control effects using the TriCaster Flex Dual. Now this will allow you to change and modify the various effects to transition between shots and bring on your downstream keyers directly on the control panel itself. So let me show you how it's done, son. All right, all right, all right. So I have my TriCaster 2 Elite interface up and I have my TriCaster Flex Dual here on my desk. So let's combine these and start playing around with how we can modify the different effects on our TriCaster. All right, so uh, to do this, let me go ahead and give you a quick lay of the land with how I'm working with my TriCaster Flex Dual, is I have my bottom stripe currently assigned to my, uh, my main switcher row. Now, the same concept that I'll be showing you today can be also applied to uh, your mix effects if you have those running as a switcher, etc. But for today, I'm just going to show you how to do this on the main switcher row. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in to part of my control surface here. So we'll be taking a look mostly at the numpad here and then also uh, at the different transition effects that I have over here uh, as well. Okay, so let's go over and take a look at the interface and start playing around with that. So what I want to start modifying today is on the TriCaster 2 Elite, if I click here, you'll see that I have uh, like nine different presets to choose from uh, for bringing, uh, for switching between my program and preview rows. And we're going to start modifying that using the numpad on the Flex Dual. Okay. So this is something that you would set up beforehand on the interface. Uh, you can always uh, load different uh, types in here using eMEMS, uh, but we'll take a look at that in videos that I'll show later on. Uh, but for today, we're just going to be like, taking a look at what we have by default in here. Okay. So what we want to be able to do uh, with on the, uh, the Flex con Dual Control Panel is modify what we're going to be selecting here as our transition, and then also uh, the speed of which we can do things, and then also some of the different options that we have available to us as well. So uh, let's take a look at that. So how we would get to that is on the main on the uh, switcher row here. Say we're back in the default in the main side of things. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on Effect. All right, and then that gives me options to control the background, aka my main switcher row transitions, and then also my keyers one, two, three, and four. So uh, let's start off with the background side, and we'll click on that. So uh, from here, we have the options to select which transition we want to use from those nine that we have selected, or, and then also uh, the option to change the rate, aka the speed, and then the option depending on the transition of what we can do with that, aka some of these effects will allow you to do ping pong uh, or reversals, and we'll take a look as we go along here. Okay, so uh, let's first, let's go through and click select. Now that we're in the select side of things, you'll see that we are in effect, background, select, get this out of the way. Uh, and then uh, what we'll do is we can use the page up and page down buttons to scroll through those nine different presets. All right, and then as I do that, you'll see I have options. I'll click on that and it says cut, alien hand, circle, I'm, I'm actually going backwards right now. <laughs> so uh, the uh, cut, fade, additive fade, not an additive fade. So this gives you the name of the ones that you are currently using, okay? So uh, from here, let's go ahead and I'm going to select the, uh, where's what I want to use? Let's use fly in B, all right? And then to select that, I will go ahead and click on enter, like so. And then we'll see on the interface that has selected fly in B. And if I select something else, for example, noise, that'll change that as well. Circle H, like that, cool. All right, and I'm going to keep this open just so we can see uh, what's going on here, okay? So uh, now we have that selected. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go back to the main side. So just if you click home, that'll br bring you back to your default options. Okay, and then uh, I'll go back to effect and we'll go to background. And now I have the option to change the rate in which I want that transition to move. So if I click on that, you'll see that I have the options for slow, medium, fast, and set. So if I cycle between those, you see if I click slow, it'll select slow, medium, fast, etc. And then next to that, you'll see where my mouse is pointed on the interface, that that shows you how long that particular transition is going to last for, okay? And if I click on set here, 
this will allow me to type in how many seconds and frames that I want to uh, have that transition uh, be set to, okay? But I'm gonna leave it uh, just by default for now. So let me go back up, page up, and we will set that to, let's do it uh, medium so we can see this, all right? Now, uh, I can either use my T bar now uh, to do this, or I can use the auto buttons here on the uh, flex control panel. So uh, what you'll need to do, first of all, is uh, make sure that you're selected on this side which one you want to use. So make sure A, background is selected. That's what we want to do. And then uh, I have options I can do fade, but if I do that, it, I'm just doing the, the fade options right here. All right, so that's just a kind of default transition. Um, if I do transition, then that will obs observe whatever I have selected in this menu over here, okay? So now if I hit the auto button, check it out. Whoop. Now it does that circle transition and circles it back, okay? And of course, if I use a T-bar, it'll do the same thing, just back and forth, yada, yada, yada. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the other options here. Uh, so let me back up. I'm currently selected as effect, background, and rate. So let me hit page up. So I go back. So now I want to look at the options, all right? Now, all of the transitions on the TriCaster do have different modifiers in here. So uh, this won't be necessarily universal. And I'm not going to go through every transition in here because that will take all day. No one wants to watch that. Okay, so if I click on option here, you'll see I have options here for reverse and ping pong. So right now, by default, it's just doing this. So if we take a look at the program, it's just doing that circle basically from the in to the out. But if I say ping pong, check this out, it will do one where I go from the out, from the in to the out. And if I click it again, it'll go from the out to the in. All right. And if I click on ping pong again, that will basically turn it off. And then I'm back to just going from the uh, in to the out. Now, if I click on reverse, well, that'll do the other way. So now I'm going from the out to the in, like so. Doo -doo, and it'll just keep doing that over and over again. Okay. And of course, I can combine these, make it reverse and ping pong. It's kind of up to you how you want to do that. All right. Uh, so let's go back here. And now I'm going to go back to effects, background, select. And now I want to select the alien hand. And I'll show you why here in a bit. So go ahead and select that. Awesome. Hit my transition. Rawr. So I'm doing one of those cool 3D warping uh, transitions. So it'll basically take this entire transition and modify it. So if I use my T-bar, for example, you can see that I'm literally grabbing that image. And in real time, I'm modifying it and squishing it back. So yeah, let's get it out of here. OK, cool. So now let's apply that same concept over to our downstream keyers. So I'm going to go ahead and select my downstream. Let's go ahead and just bring it on real quick just to show you what it is. So I have that storm cloud that I've been using for a bit. Good example here. I have it big in the corner, and uh, I'll show you why here in a bit, uh, just so you can easily see things. OK, so uh, let's go ahead and take that off for now. And now uh, let's go through and I'm going to start to modify the effects on that downstream keyer. Let me go ahead and open this up. And I'm going to hit effects. And then we'll go to keyer number one and do the same thing. We'll do select. And then this will allow me to select the different transitions that I have in here. And I'm going to do fly in from upper left, select that. All right, now using my uh, auto buttons over here on next to the numpad, if I hit auto one, check it out. Here it comes, whoosh. And if I click that again, it comes back off. All right, and let's go back into this. Go to effects, key one, go to rate. Same thing, I can make that fast, medium, or slow. Let's do that fast. And let's go ahead and transition that on. So now, whoosh, comes on fast, comes on slow. Or, sorry, <laughs> it comes, comes off slow, fast. Get your words right, Richard. Okay, so now from here, uh, what I also want to show you is, let's back up, and I'm going to go to options. And you have an option here for transition with background. And so if I click on this, you'll see that that turns that off on the interface and it turns it back on. So basically what that is going to mean is it's going to uh, allow you to bring that transition off using the transition, uh, so, sorry, it's going to bring that downstream keyer on and off with the background. So it will observe the transition that you have on the background and not do it individually. Because right now it's currently doing it just by itself. So for example, if I hit these buttons, it'll do it like that. Okay, so uh, now with transition with background, 
Uh, let me go ahead and turn it off real quick to show you what we don't want to do. Okay, so we'll turn transition with background off. Let's go ahead and bring that on. Now let's say that we want to uh, have, my, when I switch between my different shots uh, from my program and preview, that we want to have that storm cloud go with it, kind of treat it as the same layer, all right? Because right now when I do that transition, it's just going to do that, and my key will just stay there, okay? So now what we want to do, let's go back, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm still in that menu on the uh, downstream keyer number one, and if I turn with background on, now what that will allow me to do is bring those on and off at the same time. But there's a little modifier that I want to show you here. If I do it right now, you'll see right now I just have background selected and transition. So if I hit auto, for example, when I do that, that storm cloud is still there, okay? Like so, because I only have background selected. So now what I can do is I can press background and key one together, like so, and now they are being treated as a single layer. So now when I hit the auto button, check this out, it will take the cloud and my hosts on their virtual set away at the same time, like so, okay? Now I'm gonna use my T-bar to kind of show you this uh, in slow motion just so you can kind of see it. Let's go ahead and bring that back on. All right, so we have it like that. So that comes back in. Now when I start to bring this like this, you'll see that it crumbles up the virtual set and that cloud at the same time when I do this particular effect, like so, and then get out of here, like that, okay? And if I bring that off like that, well, then it just comes on like so. I can use the um, keyers right here to do that, um, or I can have m multiple keys on here, but if you want to have them both together, make sure both of those buttons are pressed, or you can press all of them at the same time. Let me see if I do that all the way so. Make sure you're pressing all of them like that. Now I have all of those selected and they will be observed the same way. But of course, I didn't configure any of these other ones so that's gonna look a little weird when I do that. Um, but uh, that gives you an idea of how you can do this uh, individually uh, and then also together using the numpad, okay? So you have your different options again on the, on the keyers here. So uh, both your backgrounds and your keys and then your options for uh, selecting which transition you wanna use and the rate that you want to use it, and then also the option uh, as well, depending on the transition you are working with. So a lot of cool things you can do with this. I uh, highly recommend playing around with it, but it makes it really fast to access things without having to get your keyboard and mouse and start to you know, go into these buttons here and select stuff. And like, all right, I go in here, hit this. Now I got to go back in here and hit fast, all right. Uh, from there, you can just basically do it all within here, and you can still switch your show in style. So. Play around with this, and of course, have some fun. There you have it, yet another awesome way to use the TriCaster Flex Dual in your live productions. Now for more tutorial videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the VizRT YouTube channel at youtube.com slash official. And you can find more information about the TriCaster Flex Dual and other VizRT products and services by contacting your local VizRT partner, or visit our website, vizrt.com. And you can also get professional training with VizRT products by signing up for Viz University at vizrt.com slash community slash viz dash university. And if you're posting your work using VizRT products on social media, make sure that you tag us using the hashtags VizRT, TriCaster, or 3Play. We love seeing what you are working on. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again real soon for another episode of VizRT Tuesday Tutorials.